Uh, how do you become one is, this is not a quick answer. There are many different ways of becoming one. In my case, I, I wrote a screenplay that for Star Trek Voyager that got me um, it got me in, foot in the door and I was allowed to pitch stories. I met people on Voyager that would eventually introduce me to Ron Moore to get the job on Battlestar. So that was how I got it. Today there are organizations like the Science and Entertainment Exchange where if you're a scientist you can go and they will take your, your information and match advisors with, with productions. I wrote a screenplay for Star Trek Voyager with a co-author um, when Star Trek Voyager took uh, unsolicited manuscripts. They, you could send your story in if it wasn't re represented by an agent and they would read it and send it back to you and whether or not a good outcome happened was roughly one in a thousand odds. But a friend and I, um, who are we're writing a book right now, um, we wrote a, a screenplay, sent it in and forgot about it because we I was in graduate school and he's busy. Seven months later, they called me and said, hey, we like your story. It goes in a direction we don't want to go, so we're not going to use it. But we'd like to invite you to come pitch stories. And, and in pitching, I met two writers, um, Michael Taylor and Brian Fuller. Michael Taylor, I would go on to work with on Battlestar Galactica. He wrote Blood and Chrome. He wrote Virtuality, uh, a pilot for that a lot of Battlestar people worked on. It wasn't Battlestar related, but um, uh, work, Michael worked on Caprica as well. I didn't work as much on Caprica, not uh, very, very little. Um, but I worked with Michael on several things in Defiance. Brian ended up going on. He's, he's created several shows. I've never actually worked with him, but um, Brian is currently the showrunner on Hannibal. And, and when I had keep in contact with these gentlemen, and when Battlestar, when I had seen some clips of the Battlestar pilot um, at, a, at a convention, Ron came and gave a presentation. I, I called Brian, or I emailed Brian and said, give me an interview, please, 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 please. And, and he, he pitched me, and, and Ron called me to his office. I had like a five minute interview, and I left there with the series Bible 33 in water. I did co author the Science of Battlestar Galactica, the book. That was fun. I what was funny is I had thought about writing that book for a long time, and I, I get, got contacted by Patrick DeGusto, who was who said, "Hey, I'm writing this book of science of Battlestar Galactica," and my initial reaction was, "Oh darn, somebody beat me to it." Well, okay, so I answered some of his questions, and after a while, he started asking very good questions. I said, and I finally said, "You know what?" I said, "I was going to write that book. You beat me to it. And there's no way I could ever catch up." So here's the deal. So you're asking questions that if I ever did something like that in this book, it would be my competitive advantage. So if you want to bring me on as a co-author, great. If not, then I think we're done here. And, and he pitched that to his, his publisher, and she said, yes! And Patrick said, yes! And Patrick's agent said, hang on. And then so I, you know, I, he represented me as well on this and that, and everyone was happy. And then we did the book, and, and it, it came out fairly well. I was happy with the way the book came out. I've seen many good reviews, a few bad reviews, but not many. We like it. I'm glad you read it. Um, the only really skating review I read, a person came down on a side of, if he didn't admit that not using laser blasters was a mistake, then, then he's stupid and he can't possibly know what he's doing. Well, as far as science advisors, I think the biggest misconception is that science advisors are like science copy editors. That we have absolute say over the science, and if there's anything that's wrong, it's absolutely our fault. It's a very, it's a very joint work doing a screenplay, and there's many reasons why science could be wrong, and that's the big, you know, there's, is that there's, there's somehow if something's inaccurate, the science advisor was asleep at the wheel that day. And you know, it depends where in the, where in the writing process we are, but oftentimes if. They're, they're writing something to say, here, how can we do this, this scenario? Or if I've read a script and then something is, isn't quite right, um, oftentimes I'll sleep on it. What's, what's funny is there's a character in Falling Skies named Roger Kadar, who is actually patterned after, after me. If you did, I don't know if you've seen Falling Skies, but, but there were a lot of Battlestar people in, in seasons two and three, and Bradley Thompson and David Weddle were the Galactica writers with whom I worked most closely, and you'll see they have one of the most tech-heavy scripts. Um, they all they got me aboard Falling Skies, and I'm getting to your point here for a moment. Um, Kadar, there's about once an episode, Bradley Thompson pulls out a Kevin Grazer quote, and the, the quote comes out of Kadar's mouth. And sometimes it's not, it's obvious, and it's one time it's not. And one of the first things he said was, I'll have something for you tomorrow. That's totally me. <laughs> so I sleep on it, and something usually comes. Everybody who worked on Galactica knew we were working on something really special. Um, early on, 
Time Magazine, Newsweek, Newsday, Rolling Stone, TV Guide, it said it was the best show on television. So when, you, when you're when you working on a show that everybody's saying is the best show on television, or, or the best show you're not watching, um, you know, we, we knew it was special from the word go. Literally, when I got when I got 33, I started reading. I got maybe five pages in. I called the woman I was dating and said, "I just got a job on the best science fiction show in history." And she said, "Well, yeah, you're not biased at all, are you?" But it turns out that that it was. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica was like crack cocaine. Everybody who worked on it got addicted. Everybody had major withdrawal symptoms when it ended, and we'd all kill to do it again.